Greetings temporal humans. This is Boudreaux, the fully immune cybernetic ghost from the future. Welcome to the third episode of Trailer Trash Tiny Terrors. These terrors are only tiny in terms of the time devoted to them. In terms of how devastating they can be to human lives, they can indeed be immense, even monstrous. Tonight, Vic Hermanson tackles mucormycosis, the only pathology he claims to truly fear. If I had human cells, a face, or a human brain, I would fear it also. I can't think of a clever, witty title for something so horrible. I had burned out after working for a year on the thoracic surgery unit at MD Anderson Hospital and asked for a leave to do something else, to be somewhere else. So I went to what they called intermediate care. It was for patients who were sicker than a med surg unit could handle, but not yet so sick that they needed the highest possible degree of care in ICU. Even in her early 60s, she was beautiful. She was an absolute force of nature. Her speech was pure Cajun French poetry. She had a name that was perfect for her background. I won't use it here. Let's just use the name Elodie Thibodeau Landry. The first thing she said to me when I walked into her room was, Oh, you're my nurse. I've never had a man nurse before. But you know what? I think we're going to be good friends. Until I die, that is. Which, I'm afraid, probably won't be all that long from now. When a nurse has a patient tell them they don't think they have very long to live, that nurse better damn well listen. Because patients are almost always correct when it comes to that particular statement. Almost anywhere you live in the world, every breath a human takes contains hundreds, if not thousands, of spores from the fungus family Mucoraceae. This has been the case for hundreds of thousands of years, and our bodies know how to handle this particular fungus until those defensive mechanisms start to fall apart, until they are weakened, until we are immunocompromised, and then we are simply nutrition for the fungus. When a fungus grows on human tissue, it sends tendrils, hyphae, deep into the tissue. These bring nutrition to the fungal body. The fungus simply cannot be wiped off. It is internal to the tissue. In Mrs. Thibodeau Landry's case, it was in her nose, it was in her sinuses, it was in her oral cavity, all places that are warm, moist, and, in her case, immunocompromised. Fungal organisms can be some of the fastest growing organisms on the face of the earth. The type of fungus that Mrs. Thibodeau Landry was dealing with is capable of doubling its volume every two hours if left untreated. Yes, medications do exist to treat this disease. The most commonly used is called amphotericin B. It's like a chemotherapy agent. It's one of the most horrible medications a person can take. It causes fever, pain, it can cause hallucinations, but mainly what it causes is shaking. We would call it shaky B. If it always worked, that might be one thing, but it doesn't. Sometimes the fungus wins, and the only possible way to bring the infection under control is to remove the infected tissue. Mrs. Thibodeau Landry liked my hair. She liked my friendly manner. She liked the fact that I was a man nurse. She introduced me eagerly to her daughters and her husband, and we fought that disease for several weeks using intravenous amphotericin B, some steroids, some other medications. We fought it with everything we had. She dug down deep to try 
to make her own body, her own mind, fight this fungal infection. But each day, her pain became worse. The discharge from her nose became blacker and thicker. They also call it the black fungus. Her reaction to the amphotericin B increased to where she was just in utter agony. And there really was no choice at that point except to take her to surgery and to remove those parts of her body that had become infected. With her, that meant removing her nose, her ocular orbits, both eyeballs, the upper palate of her mouth, and a large section of her sinus cavities. Essentially, they were going to dig away the front part of her face, as they had no other way of keeping her alive. If it's allowed to continue, in its growth unabated, it will go to your brain. And that's where she was. She was to the point of, I can die for certain if it gets to my brain, or I can have a large portion of my face and skull removed and have some chance of living. She had reached the point where she was frightened most of the time. She felt safest when I was taking care of her. She had her husband go to the hospital and ask if I could transfer back to critical care to take care of her after her surgery. They agreed, and I was happy to follow her and do what I could, although I knew in my heart that all I could do was bring her the comfort of being a competent, caring nurse whom she felt comfortable being around. I asked specifically to be on duty when she came out of surgery. They had scheduled it, and it was no problem. So she came from surgery, still on a surgical bed, and we transferred her to a critical care bed. And then I began the job of sorting out IVs, making sure that all the dressings are intact, taking initial vital signs, trying to find out how she is after having a large part of her skull removed. She was intubated and therefore unable to talk. There were no eyes to look into. I couldn't see that Cajun sparkling happiness to see how her mind was doing. So we worked out a hand squeeze system and we continued to try to keep her alive. In about a week, the seizures started. Then she had a stroke and was unable to move her left side. I can remember keeping up the hand-squeezing communication for quite a while. And then I can remember her taking her right hand and just waving it at us as if, no, that's enough. The seizures continued. The medications continued. And... After a few days of waving that right hand, it was decided that we would stop treatment, that we would simply allow her body to die. That's a defeat. We hate doing that. We don't ever want anyone to die, but in this case we had no choice. There was nothing further we could do. Finally, sans eyes, sans nose, sans teeth, sans mouth, sans sinuses, Mrs. Thibodeau Landry, passed into whatever comes after this life. I spent a lot of time after that learning everything I could about mucormycosis. And to this day, of all the diseases that humans can get, of every pathologic process that can take our lives, there is not a single disease that I fear more. Vic Hermanson, that is indeed nightmare fuel. I believe you should explore getting a less squeaky desk chair. It is quite audible in your recordings. Why do human bodies insist on moving? Audience, thank you for listening. There will be a new trailer trash tiny terror in a few days.